Well, hello, boys and girls. Here we are again at When We Feel Like It O'Clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Here's some. Here's here's a couple of uh, pearls for you just to get you in the mood. Those are get you in the mood pearls there. If you don't know what those are, you can go in my other videos and find out. Anyways, um, well, my last video, I sent it out to the land to talk about Taylor Hall and where he might go and... So I did so, and we got a whole bunch of stuff back. I, this is what I love about this. I find this so interesting. But by the way, I'm doing this right off the cuff. I'm going into Facebook. I'm going to kind of read out some of the things that some very smart hockey people, and I do say smart hockey people. Um, one of the reasons why I've gone into this is that I've worked with people that get paid for a living to talk about hockey. And I find that there's great hockey minds there, but there's also just great hockey minds that do regular jobs and uh, love the game. And, and I've learned a lot from everything. When I first started doing these videos, I kind of did it in this sense, like I thought I knew something. And, and in a way I do. Um, I, I will admit that. I, I do have a uh, BPAL picks. Uh, you can go to our Patreon or you can go over to BPAL Picks. Check out what we do on YouTube there. And I uh, help people gamble on hockey and they make a lot of money. So I do know to a certain, to, I do know a lot about hockey, but I'm just nowhere near the only one that knows a lot about hockey. There are plenty of people out there. So I, I sent it out to a whole bunch of people. I, the Columbus Blue Jackets, a representative, I like to say, from the Columbus Blue Jackets came back and said uh, and said that he believes the coyote had or he believes that uh, Hall was not something that would be good for them uh, he doesn't think he's going to be worth the uh, nine million dollars a year long-term contract that he's had and I'm actually hearing this from quite a few of the people on other teams as well when offering Taylor Hall as a possibility as a free agent and they bring up some very valid points um, I said who do you I asked him who would you figure would be better his reason for it was that um, he's only had three years above 80 points in 11 seasons he had 89 points in the one year when he won uh, the con Smythe I believe or the player of the year He's playing, he always been playing fragile even more now. So he's hurt a lot, he mentions, um, in the last three years, more so than before. I, uh, he appreciates wanting to make a splash, but he thinks they can do better. So I asked him, well, who do you figure you could get better for $9 million or less out there? Um, I'll, I didn't really... I'm basically saying here, Taylor Hall for $9 million, There aren't many left-wingers that can play as well as Taylor Hall. I do take into consideration his injuries. That is uh, a definitely a risk. But a difficult player to find at that that can play at that level. He said there's only three years that he had 80, 80 points or more. Well, tell me another left-winger that's done that. <laughs> there hasn't been too many. There are have been some. But getting them, try getting them. It's very difficult. So, anyways, I thought I brought. I, I asked him, who I asked him that question, and he said, uh, he, "I believe the Coyotes had a better record without him. That's true. Besides being frequently injured, he's been called out on occasion, and seems to be a cancer. He, this is a guy who knows his shit. Uh, in Edmonton, I'm from Edmonton. When they traded him on the ill-fated." Larson trade they said that they wanted a different voice in the room they'd rather have McDavid's voice in the room now if you read between the lines there you would say that maybe Hall's voice in the room wasn't the greatest thing there has been lots of talk of Hall being kind of like a um, alpha male personality that's like a grrr and, he, and he can be very shameful to his teammates and uh, uses a lot of tactics that are quite often um, not appreciated in the room. So he, see what I mean? Very knowledgeable people here. Um, fair, I, and then 
I said, fair enough. I think using the nine million differently may be better idea. He said, Brendan Dillon for four point five million dollars, maybe getting Brendan Dillon in that defense. I'm not sure that defense needs to be upgraded that much, and I'm honestly a, not a huge, as huge a fan of Brendan Dillon as he is. But let's look at it from the perspective that a lot of people do. They think Brendan Dillon. People think generally that Brendan Dillon is a solid defensive defenseman, and that he could add. They could add that to their roster at four point five, or Eric Gustafson. Getting him for three million, I think you could get Eric Gustafson at three million. I met, I happened to mention uh, after this to him that I think Trotz would lose his mind having Gustafson on that team. Gustafson is poor defensively, uh, and that's really what his issue has been. He does provide a lot of offense. I'm not sure you need that with Seth Jones and Wawrenski already on that team. Murray plays a pretty good defense. So I'm just not sure that those things are necessary for that team. While the Leafs could unload Kerfoot to uh, two years remaining at 3.5, I suppose as well. Again, I don't see these as upgrades on their roster as basically just adding more depth. It depends on what you're looking for, I suppose. He said that Kerfoot would be an up, uh, more effective than Wenberg. I cannot disagree with you there. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, so anyways, his point was really that he wasn't uh, a huge fan of taking on Hall. Um, so we have no offer there for Hall. Um, we went on back and forth. It was very interesting. I'd go over to that Columbus Blue Jackets uh, uh, Facebook and see if some of the fine comments are there. It was really good. Um, I tend to disagree here. You can tell me what you think. I think if they could get Taylor Hall, I would be, a, I think that uh, they'll be calling him up. I think they'll be calling up his agent and saying, hey, what would it take to come over here? I mean, after losing Panarin, um, they should have the same kind of cap room to be able to bring over. They were offering Panarin apparently the same as they were at the Rangers. I admit uh, Hall is not Panarin. I wouldn't want to pay him more than $9 million. But if I only had to give up a third or a fourth round pick to give it a shot, and if it doesn't work out, trade him to another team. Now, again, I've had a few more questions. I did mention it in my other video, but I'm going to mention it again. Because um, we're going to go over to Montreal here, who had some other fine people that were mentioning some ideas about t Montreal Canadiens taking Taylor Hall or having a shot at him. And um, one of the guy people said that you would not need to offer any uh, package for Hall because he's a U UFA. Not necessarily so. The person with the rights of an uh, unrestricted free agent can offer that free agent an $8 million, con eight year contract, I'm sorry. No other team can do that. That is something a lot of people don't know. This is the reason why teams trade for the rights of players that are UFAs. Because they want to offer them that extra year, which can be a lot. We're talking about $9 million a year here. And uh, nine more million is huge. So it gives you more bargaining power compared to other teams that will uh, go after him as unrestricted free agents. So say you gave him a third or a fourth that didn't work out, ask him where he wants to go, call around, see if there's a team out there that would be willing to give you back your third or fourth and give him the eighth year. You see what I'm saying? So that came up. The reason why I brought that up is that came up in the Montreal Canadiens conversation I had. By the way, I didn't have any comments on my actual video. Tell me what you think of Taylor Hall down there. Tell me if your team would give him a huge contract. If you're the Calgary Flames, where he's rumored to go, if you like the Calgary Flames, or even if you don't and you just want to talk about it, do you think Calgary should give Taylor Hall that $9 million a year? Do you think he's going to be a fit there? I know I'm positive he'd like to go there because I know he was an Edmonton, as an Edmonton Oiler, he was a huge fan of Alberta, and he's, it's for his home. So I'm sure he'd want to go there. Should Calgary do that? Should your team do that? 
Talk about it in the comment section. Let's connect, boys and girls. Let's connect. Okay, so now we have Montreal Canadiens. And uh, the first thing they said was the first person came on, and that was Ke Kevin McGraw. And I said, he just said, nope. <laughs> I was not going to just settle for that. So I said, why? And I said, because he'd be better. I, I said it would be better than every team player you have on your team, pretty much. And he said he'd rather uh, offer sheep bars all. Now, I believe the Islanders would match any thing that Barzell was offered. They've got about $8 million next year's uh, cap. He said that they had $3 million, but that's this year. They've got more than that next year, and there's people they can trade. They're going to sign Barzell. No way after losing Tavares are they going to lose Barzell. So you might rather do it. Can't see it happen. Uh, so we had that discussion. Um, then another person came on and said, yes, I think Taylor Hall would be great. I'd love to have anybody that can score. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, so that, I, and I agree with that. Um, so we go down here a little bit and it says, um, and it says, no, I would not want Taylor Hall for the same reasons that our other fellow said. And that was Kevin McGraw, by the way. Thank you, Kevin McGraw, for your comments. Uh, no way we want Tyler Hall for the same reasons. Injury prone, talk about a cancer. I'm actually surprised that there it had got around the league so much and got around with the fans so much that he was somewhat of a cancer in the room. And you can certainly make a case for that. He was from Edmonton, they don't do crap, he leaves. They still didn't really get much better, but, I mean, they didn't get much worse either. Then he goes to New Jersey, and they don't improve all that much. The one year they did, he kind of carried him on his back. And that's the kind of guy he is. He's a raw, raw guy. But from what I understand, when things start going south, he gets really irate. He hates to lose, and he takes it out on his teammates. That's the buzz. Not sure if that's totally true, but I haven't heard anybody say... That's not true either. <laughs> and it's been out there quite a bit. Enough that Facebook people that love the game have heard it. So, I mean, could be. Could be something there. Um, as far as the injuries are concerned, valid concern as well. Again, what I'm saying here with Taylor Hall is I'm not sure you're going to find a better left wing out, winger out there too often. And I think in the end he's going to get his nine. So those are that's Montreal. Montreal saying they don't want him. One person says he does. Blue Jackets saying they're not sure about it. What do you guys think? Do you think Montreal should pony up the money here? Do you think the Columbus Blue Jackets should pony up the money? Who else should be out there that could pony up the money? Talk to me. I'm going to post uh, this on Facebook back to these guys. They can tell me more. We can have more discussion about it. I want to give them all a shout out because... They're fantastic. And if I missed anybody in these conversations, uh, please let me know. Oh, it's Cecil Cripps. Oh, that was the other thing. I'll talk about this too. Cecil Cripps said that they don't have a center for, for, for him. And I would say, well, you can find one still. Montreal would still have cap. But right away, there was Colin B. Crew who said, yes, we do. We have Suzuki. And I do agree, Colin B. Crew that Suzuki is going to be ready very soon. I think that guy's a beast. He's going to be a great, a very good number one center. How good? I'm not sure. But I think he's going to be a very good one. I think if Montreal is not going to rebuild, which maybe should be their best option, but if they're not going to, I would throw Taylor Hall a phone call, see what's out, see if he's willing to come here uh, for the extra $9 million that you might pay him. Well, boys and girls, that's my full 42%. That's all I have to give today. Uh, again, hit the bell, subscribe. I'll send you a Mayan HL Pearls of Wisdom necklace signed by me and helicoptered to your door, pearlocoptered to your door by Hernandez or Melissa. Um, just that alone. I mean, that should be a reason to subscribe right there. Lots of people are hitting the like button. Hit the don't like too. We love you just the same. Everybody out there, get down in that comment section. Talk to me and have a great day. Lots of love too.